Welcome back to another video. Hi guys and welcome back to another video. First of all I want to say a huge thank you for everybody that watched my previous videos and left a comment and subscribes to my channel. I'm really happy to see that a lot of people are finding my videos useful and they find information that they could have probably found on Google as well but hey they watch my video and they found out new things from my video so thank you very very much for watching. In today's video I want to talk to you about a couple of tricks that you can use in terms of learning manual settings or learning a little bit more about manual settings just by using your camera. In my previous video where I was showing you the different types of digital cameras I mentioned that most of them will come with an automatic setting. What that automatic setting will do, it will basically analyze the scene that you're about to photograph and choose the best settings for that particular image. Then you just click the button and the camera will take the picture and in most cases it will look absolutely fine. Some digital cameras will also have some scene modes. What they do is they act like an automatic mode but it does give you the option to tell the camera beforehand what you're about to photograph. These scene modes will usually do a slightly better job than the automatic modes just because the camera has that extra little bit of information about what you're about to capture. So besides the fact that they are very easy to use, they will also produce a better quality even than those automatic settings. And this is a shame because a lot of people are not using those automatic settings, those scene modes, just because they think they are a little bit of a gimmick or that they don't really understand how they work. But there is a way that you can use those scene modes or the automatic mode to your advantage in terms of learning how the manual settings actually work on a camera. So just by using them, you will be able to learn about shutter speed, aperture, ISO, and even white balance. As we all know, with digital cameras, you get to see the image that you just took straight away. So after you take the image, you have the playback button, you press it, and then you can see the final result. On the screen, apart from information regarding the picture number and the battery level of the camera, you do have some other information that is very, very important and it's key to learning how to use manual settings. If when you're looking at a picture on your camera, you can only see the picture and for example, the battery level or the, the picture number or how much space you have left on the memory card, usually you will have a button that will either be called a display button or the info button. Now pressing that button, it will allow you to have a little bit more information about that particular image. And that information would be regarding the settings that the camera used in order to capture it. So we can take all that information that shows up on the back of your camera and use it in our learning process. Just to give you a very, very simple example, if, for example, you put a camera in portrait mode and you take a picture, no matter what you're going to photograph, either a person or a landscape or a, an object, a cup or something, the camera will choose a lower F number, so a lower aperture. While if you're putting the camera in landscape mode or you're selecting the landscape mode on your camera, the camera will always try and use a higher aperture number. Now, obviously this will depend a lot on the environment that you're shooting in, depending if you're shooting somewhere where you have a lot of light or not enough. So keep in mind there might be some changes depending on where you are actually taking the photograph. So if you decide to put the camera in portrait mode, because it's the one that most camera will have as a default, even if they don't have a scene option, they will most likely have a portrait mode, you will notice that the camera uses that lower f-stop and will try to create a nice blur in the background. So since portrait mode is designed to focus on one object and blur the background, you can easily draw the conclusion that using a lower f number will create that sort of effect. Now, you do have to take into consideration that using that lower aperture value will create more light, will allow more light to hit the sensor, so the image will be a lot brighter. So again, you have to be aware of the fact that changing just one setting will not always work. So the way you can take this into practice is, for example, now we know that for portraits, you need a small F number. 
simply switch the button on your camera onto aperture mode and start playing with that. Start using smaller values for the aperture and then move up to higher ones and see how the picture changes. Now, if you have a landscape mode, which again is very, very common on most cameras, you will notice that the camera will always try and use a higher F value, a higher aperture. So that higher aperture will create sharpness across the whole area, uh, the whole image. When using the camera in aperture mode, so the A mode or the AV mode on a Canon, Canon likes to be different, <laughs> um, you will have control just over that particular setting. You will be able to put in your own aperture, but you will not have access to any of the other settings. So even if you are somewhere where there's a lot of light, let's say you want to photograph something outside and you want to take a landscape and you take the aperture all the way up to f11 or f8, then the camera will try and compensate by changing the other settings so that the image will not end up overexposed using a bigger aperture will ensure that the whole image will be in focus and then the camera will take care of the shutter speed and of the ISO. Now for some, this might seem a little bit silly that you're using the camera in automatic mode just so that you can then move into manual mode and put your own settings. But trust me, it works. It's the way that I learned photography, it's the way that I learned what aperture and shutter speed does, it's the way that I learned how white balance can change the colors in your image and it's the best way to start your learning journey into photography. Now, there are a lot of books out there, there are a lot of videos on YouTube of people just explaining how to do things, but I know sometimes it, it doesn't work like that. I can read all the books in the world, I can watch all the videos out there, but if I don't try it and do it myself, I won't be able to understand how it actually works. So if you're like me and you like learning by actually doing stuff, then this is the best way of doing it. So I highly, highly recommend that you try out. I know this was a very, very short video. I am working on a couple more new ones, so just stay tuned. Until next time, have a good one.